And now for tension forces. Okay, so I've seen tension forces before in pulleys. Usually they are called um, T. You've seen it as T, but another way of writing them is FT. So force tension, FT. So you can say uh, forces, tension forces are basically forces in a stretch rope or string. So see here, see you got this little white rope here. Okay, if I stretch it, assume the rope is massless. There's some tension in there, spread out from every section of this rope. Here's a tension, here's a tension, 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 tension. Anyway, so the tension force <clears throat> is stretched out along this whole thing. But sometimes you can say, what if you want to compress something? Well, yeah, you could do it on a metal rod like this, okay? So if I press the metal rod together, <clears throat> there's some kind of tension force along the metal rod as well. I could pull the metal rod and that's still a kind of tension force, okay? So tension forces can be stretching or compressions. Here's some, ah, I don't know where to throw this thing. Okay. Here's some diagrams to help us think about tension forces. Okay, so the more famous one are pulleys. Let's say this is a roof. Then you tie a, not pulley lah, an object to it. Let's say a box with some mass. So this mass, why does it have a tension in the first place? The tension is going to be the red one over here. Why is there a tension? Because... If this block is just chilling there, just hanging on the on the on the ceiling, this mass has some weight, W, but it doesn't fall because it's held up by the tension. So this T here in this case, okay, this T equals to our W because the block is just chilling there. So yes, in this case it's a tension because uh, uh weight is the, the the object has a weight. So tension is holding it up. That's it, okay? Um, one thing to note is that tension along this whole part of the string is the same. Okay, so tension spreads out through the string if we say this string is massless. Massless. Means uh, the string has some mass, yes, but it's so small, it's compared to the, the whole mass thing, so considered negligible, okay? So if string's massless, Tension is the same across or along the whole string, up and down. What if we have something a little strange like this, kind of like a crab eyes? What if we have two pulleys? And then you have a string that runs from one end, goes to the pulley, comes out the other side, and then on both ends, they have a mass hanging. Same size. Okay, so this is still M, this is M. Now, nothing's moving, it's just there, static. So in this case, you look at the left part of this pulley, there is a uh, force downwards. So force downwards weight. And there is a tension force that holds it up. That's why it's balanced, no acceleration, nothing's moving. Then if you look at the right side, there's also the same weight, because same mass, and the same tension holding it up. But what about the top part? If you look at it, Tension has to be the same along the string, right? So if we look at this middle section, that well, that piece of rope there, tension is pulling this way, tension is pulling this way. In fact, you can draw a whole lot of number of arrows of tension in there. It will all be the same. Key point is that this tension, T, is the same as the one on the right, T. So tension along the string is the same. Now, if you want to think of compression, it's kind of hard to think of ropes because, see, ropes, you compress it, it kind of just goes, it's kind of slack. So, if you want to think of compression, such as this one, okay, tension and compression, you have to think of metal rods, or, as you will see in the future chapter, you can think of springs. So, for metal rods, such as this, if you compress it, then you have a tension, like you push from the top and the bottom, push it, you have a tension down and the tension up and they're the same because you're just doing this okay pushing like that uh in the future we will encounter things like springs just a heads up for the future if you compress the spring there's some tension force there we call that uh, uh related to hook's law so if we compress 
then there's some tension there that wants to push it out. Or if you say we stretch a spring, go down there, okay, we use our hand to pull it out force, there will be some kind of a tension force in the spring that wants to push it back. I, sh I should draw the, the tension on the, the, the spring, but there's some kind of tension force that wants to push it back to the original. So this one will say for a later chapter where the tension depends on how stretched out this thing is. But for now, we'll just focus on strings and rods. We'll save the springs for later. Okay. Let's look at uh, tension in pulleys. So pulleys are things that look like this. You have a wheel. Usually we say it's frictionless. Where's the frictionless? Okay, frictionless. So no friction. That's important. And we'll see why in a bit. And then the small block will rise and a big block will fall. So small block is going up, some acceleration. Big block is going down with some acceleration. What is the acceleration of the two blocks? Okay, first thing to note is these two acceleration. Ooh, wrong color, wrong color, sorry. The acceleration of these two blocks are the same. I repeat, acceleration of these two blocks are the same. Why is that so? Because they are both part of the same system. So they all, both have to move in the same acceleration. No? You go up, I come down. I go down, you go up. So remember, uh, if two objects tie together, they're the same acceleration. Okay, first step when you see pulleys like this is you will want to label all the forces you, you know. So, ooh, big M means big weight force. Weight force, gravitational force. Small m, you will see a very small force where this W is mg, this big W is big mg. Okay, other things, what else do we know? Ah, tension, we looked at that just now. Okay, so if you look on the left pulley, there is some weight and there will be some tension in there. Don't know if it's balanced or not. Probably not, but I'm just going to write a tension there. On the right side also, there will be a tension that holds up uh, the block. Tension may be bigger or smaller than W, we don't know, okay? Uh, we can calculate that, but we're not worried about that now. Okay, so how do you find acceleration on this block? There's two ways we can do it. The first method, so method one, is the one where not so much math is involved, but you have to redraw the system. So redraw into a straight line. What that means is you kind of bend the strings and you see all the forces in a horizontal line. So it could look something like this. So on the left side, I have a block M and a baby block small m. Okay, what's pulling big M to one side is big M G. Then there's a string connecting them both. Then for small m, there is a force, gravitational force, mg, small mg. Then, of course, oh, don't forget the tension. We have tension force pulling one side, tension force pulling the other side. Okay, so this is a graphical way to literally see what's all the forces involved and where is acceleration. Oh, forgot acceleration. So acceleration is the small block will move towards the big block and then, and then you can draw something like that. So we're going to accelerate this way. So you see, small blocks moving the same direction, big blocks also moving the same direction. Now, if you want to find acceleration and you have forces, okay, always think of Newton's second law, F equals to MA. Now we have, um, it's convenient to say the direction of acceleration is positive. So anything to the right is positive. Which means you will have MG positive, this T is negative, this T is positive, this MG is negative. Put them all together, you will have MG minus T plus T minus MG. Equals to, now this one be careful, this M, ah, let's choose blue color, this M is the 
all the object's masses added together. So be careful, don't just choose one block or the other. The whole system's moving together, so you gotta think of the whole system's mass. So now you have what's the, all the all the masses add together? Big M plus small m times acceleration. Okay, let's simplify a bit. Lots of stuff. Ooh, T and T conveniently cancels out, so bye bye. Minus T plus T. All that's left is mg minus mg equals to m total mass of the system times a. Ah, if you want to find acceleration, don't worry. If you have no values, just write out the terms. Okay, a is in this case m minus n times g. I factorize it out over m plus n. So there's one example how you can. If you know the masses, you can straight away find the acceleration. That's pretty neat. Make sure you know how to think of uh, this method, how you redraw into a straight line. There is one more method, and we'll look at that next. Now, method two is slightly more mathematical, but it's very powerful because then you can solve much more complicated systems. One of the challenge questions will be here later. Anyway, first step, like usual, we draw our forces. We have big M times G and our force on the small block, small mg. Then we have tension on both sides, some tension holding up the big block, and some tension holding the small block. Remember, these two tensions are the same value. Okay, so method two, I'll just put M2. This is what we call, you're going to separate each line. So we think of the left side and the right side separately. So on the left side, you just bother, draw a free body diagram, then the other side, draw a free body diagram. What's a free body diagram? Okay, remember a bit, ah. Huh? Free body diagram is only the body and the forces are acting on it. So first we have M, some T, some Mg. Which one do you think is bigger? Just now we said the big block's falling, right? So big block is falling at some acceleration, small block is going up. Means the weight should be bigger, if not, how can it be falling down? So you have acceleration down this way. Then we do our usual second law. So F equals to MA. Add up all the forces. Okay, we assume uh, down is positive. So MG is positive and T is negative. So we will have MG minus T equals to what's the mass of this block? Big M. So you write big M A. Okay, later we will need to equate the t, so let me just rearrange this a tiny little bit. So express t. So t equals to mg minus ma. Okay, that's for the left side. What about the right side? For the right side, you draw another free body diagram. For the small block, it has a t and it has a mg. Which one do you think is bigger? Small block is going up or down? Check and see. Small block is going up. How do we know that? They said it, they said it in the question. Okay, so we know for sure. Lah. So small block is going up. So how you relate the resultant forces with the acceleration? Think of F equals MA. So then, okay, up is positive. So T will be positive. MG is negative. So T minus MG is MA for the small block. Rearrange a bit to express T. We have MG plus MA. There we go. Then what next? We want to get rid of T. No, we want to combine these two equations. Okay, We have equation 1, equation 2. Then we do some simultaneous substitution. Okay, So we sub out t to combine the equations. Now how do we get that? So t equals to t, so mg on the left side is ma. Then from this other side, we have mg plus ma. All small m's. All, small, all big m's and small m's are different things. Now, let's do like what we did earlier, express for a. So mg minus mg is big M A plus M A. 
you do a bit of factorizing, you will also get the same thing where um, m minus m times g over m plus m equals to the acceleration of the whole system. So this one is kind of another way to do it. You say, wow, so complicated, so many equations. It's long, yes, but it's helpful if you have multiple pulleys. Bend here, bend there, three wheels, four wheels, and things like that. So I just thought I want to show you how you can use this method as well. So what if we have an object on the table and the other side is hanging? Okay, I dare you to pause this, pause, pause, pause this thing. Try to figure out an expression for acceleration, like what we did just now, okay? A equals to something, 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 something. And then when you're done, you think you're done, then you play the video and check if you got it right. Okay? So, anyway. First thing first, draw all the forces that are involved. Okay, for the hanging weight, we got a weight, mg. That's a force, pulling it down. That's going to cause this little fella to accelerate down. Okay. Then what else do we have? Mm, tension. Right. So there's going to be some tension. It has to be some tension for your string here. Holding it up. Okay. I think this side will look, it looks good. Now for the big, big block. There's going to be a force pulling it down. Okay. And there's going to be a tension pulling it to the right. That's what makes the block move to the right in the first place. So you could say that there's going to be some acceleration this way for the big block. Right? Then don't... Mm, is this a smooth or, or frictionless surface? It didn't really say. It just say it's a horizontal. So there could be friction. We don't know. It depends on the question. So you have an extra term. Friction. Uh, if the friction is big enough, nothing's going to move. But the friction is too small and your table is smooth, your, uh, your, your whole blocks of mess will just fall off the table and bye-bye, crash on the floor. Okay, now, which method you want to use? You can use both. I will use the rearrange in a straight line method, but you can also use the, the, the maths method where tension is the same. Okay, so first things first, I want to rearrange everything to a straight line so I can see the big picture. This works if there's two objects in line. If there's complicated pulleys, we can't use this one anymore. Okay, so M and N connected by a line. What's stopping it? Friction. What's pulling it to the right? Weight or MG. And in between, what's holding them together? Tension and tension. Okay, sure. And where are they all moving? This fella is going to accelerate to the right. Small block also going to accelerate to the right. I'm going to pause here, here because uh, a lot of students have a misconception. They say, Miss, Miss, what about the weight of the big block? So this fellow, shouldn't we include that in the picture as well? Now hang on a second. We only want to look at the direction of motion this way and this way. That's the straight line that I'm rearranging. So this W here does not really affect the motion of the whole system. You know what I mean? Okay, Because this W is perpendicular to the table. So it's not going it's, to... It's, it could be really heavy or really light. It doesn't matter because it doesn't affect how it's going to move horizontally. Okay, So yes, it has a mass, but it does not affect the system. So don't care about it. Now let's see. Okay, so let's write out equation. Net force equals to the mass of total system times A. I should write this as big M so we can differentiate. Okay, so now the signs, let's say to the right is positive, okay, to follow direction of acceleration. So friction is going to be negative, positive tension, negative tension, positive W. Let's put it all together. So we have negative F plus T minus T. Hey, can, tension cancels out. Nice. Plus W or mg equals to mass of the whole system. So m plus m equals to g. Now some of you, uh, if you did it and you forgot about friction, that's okay. It'll just be an extra friction term that we missed out. 
T and T cancel. Okay, so all that's left is Mg minus F. Oh, wait, I'm going to mistake here. This is A. Aha. Equals to, I want to move M over M to the other side. So we got something like that. A. So that's how I can express the uh, acceleration for this table pulley system. If you know values, of course, straight away you can calculate the values. But if you don't, then you have to do uh, those kind of stuff. Like move the algebra around M and A. Okay. So this is for tension in pulleys. Here's one question where strings are not involved. Now it's a tow bar. Tow bar is the metal rod. Okay. So let's look at this question. It's uh, adapted from a past year. Sim simplify a bit. So let's see, we got a tractor connected by a tow bar to a trailer, so they're connected. And the trailer experience resistance to motion, could be friction, something else, okay? And what are we trying to find again? When they're moving at a constant speed, very important, what is the force? So we're trying to look for a force on the tractor by the tow bar. <gasps> How do we imagine all these kind of things? Okay, when you see force questions, kinematic questions, always, always draw a diagram if it's not provided. Okay, repeat. Draw a diagram if none is provided for you. So try your best. Draw a trailer and a tractor. Okay, so we have a trailer, like a box, connected by a wooden or metal rod to the tractor. Okay, trailer, tractor. Um, what we know about the speed, constant speed. So they are moving, but at constant speed. Constant speed means no acceleration. It's just moving only. And they did tell us about one force. They did say that the trailer, the one behind, experienced a resistance of 1,000 Newton. So then what is the force exerted on the tractor? So on the tractor by the tow bar. So this thing we're trying to find. What is this T? Interesting. Now, if there's a lot of bodies together, best to uh, draw it all separately. Break up all the pieces so you can see. So if I break up the pieces, we have the trailer by itself. If you want to break up the bar, also can, but you will see that it's a bit pointless later. Then you have the bar. Then you have the front tra uh, tractor. Then you redraw all your forces that act on these objects. So this one, a thousand newtons. This one, tension, we're trying to find. Okay. Don't forget to write down acceleration is zero. So for each object in the system, acceleration is zero, acceleration is zero, acceleration is also zero. Now what? Okay, think about this qualitatively for a moment. Means don't do the math lah, you just think. We have a tension pulling on the tractor. Pulling backwards. Why is that? Because the tractor has to pull this heavy trailer behind it. So to do this kind of problem, let's work backwards from the trailer on the left side. Okay, let's start with this. Acceleration should be zero. So acceleration zero means net force should be zero for this part of the, 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 the trailer. La. This trailer net force should be zero. Means if there is a back resistive force of 1000, there should be a forward of 1000. Why? Because then sum of F equals to MA. This F is zero, then this A is also zero. So check. Okay. Then we look at this middle bar, which actually you don't have to think about it one, because it's just transmitting the, the tension. So for the middle bar, you're going to have something pulling it to the left, okay? Because it has to pull the trailer, ma. so the trailer is like, Ugh, pull along, and another tension to the right. So tension and tension. So the tension pulling this bar to the left is the trailer, okay? So the, the bar will feel like the trailer is pulling it to the left. And to the right, it will feel like the tractor is pulling to the right. So 1,000 Newton. Finally, for the last T we want to find, it's actually also 1,000 Newton. Why? Because 
then uh, it feels the bar pulling so this is the same as this some of you may think uh, a bit confused, why so many diagrams? You can shortcut a bit. So the shortcut is to not draw the bar in the middle because tension is the same everywhere. So all you have to do is draw a trailer, draw a tractor, and their forces. So this is a shortcut. Okay, behind is 1000. You want net force zero, so forward is also 1000. And because they are connected by a, a rod, so this sh rod should also exert 1000 newton on the uh, tractor. So these two are the same. Okay, it's kind of almost like the equal and opposite thing. So usually it's more if there's strings or bars involved, this shortcut on the right is more than enough. Yeah, you don't have to draw the middle one, just to think of. Oh, how is tension the same? Tension is same. And you just draw the objects. Okay, so this is for tension in tow bars. Okay, so this last challenge question is optional. If you want to try it out after I explain a bit, pause the video, come back and check out, uh, compare your work with this. Okay, the challenge here is, I want you to find the tension in each string. So uh, here will be T1 holding up everything. The pulley included, now the pulley has a mass, 1 kg. Uh, the tension 2 holding up block on the left and tension 3 holding up the, another block on the right. Now this whole, whole system is not moving. It's what we call in equilibrium. So nothing's moving, acceleration is 0 up there, acceleration is 0 down there. Nothing moving, just chilling. So yes, pause the video now. Try find it, come back and check. Right, so if you if you tried the, the method one where you rearrange everything into a horizontal line, you'll find that you, you don't know where to put T1. You can do it for T2, T3, but what about T1? It's a bit harder. So uh, the best way to do this is to use method two. Separate it into three sections. Or rather, three objects in the system. So three free body diagrams. First one will be, let's try with T2. Okay. T2 will have some weight pulling it down, which is mg. That's 1.5 times 9.81. So, okay, let's do T2 system. It's pulling up the block and it's balanced with the weight, mg. So it's not moving, so the resultant force should be zero. So you can take either way to be positive negative. Though. You can say, T2 minus mg is ma. But then a is 0, so it's just T2 equals to mg. So what is the second the t tension of the, the, the second string, or T2? You just have to do 1.5 kg times 9.81. And you get your answer. What's the answer? Should be about 14.7. Uh, so I calculate already, 14.7. That's T2. The other friend is T1. So if you look at the object on the right, 1.5, not T1, sorry, T3 is pulling it up. Some mass is pulling it down. It's from the W here. So we do the same thing. Since it's balanced, so T3 equals to mg. No acceleration, it's not moving up, not moving down. So tension of the third one will be 1.5 times 9.81. Also, wait a second, that's the same answer, 14.7. So here we can actually see an example where this tension and this tension connected like that, going through a pulley, is actually the same. 14.7, 14.7. That's what I was talking about previously. Tension that slides through a pulley is the same. If the string is massless, of course. So two conditions, string is massless, no friction in the pulley, then tension is the same, which is uh, all we need to do at A levels. Huh? Then we have T1 left to find. Okay, so we can draw a third system for the pulley wheel, the pulley wheel. T1 is holding it up, but what's pulling down? All the blocks is, all the blocks is trying to pull it down. So we actually have T2 pulling it down, and then T3 also pulling it down. 
Remember? Is this whole thing moving? No, acceleration is zero. Your pulley wheel is not flying up or down, so its resultant force should also be zero. So you could write it out like this. Okay, if I show all the working. If you say up is positive, then it's T1 minus T2 minus T3. It goes to M of the pulley times A. Okay, acceleration is zero, so we can just ignore that and say T1 equals to T2 plus T3. So T1 is everything pulling up, T2, T3 is everything pulling down, and they are both balanced. Okay, let's solve it. We already found T1, T2, and T3. So T1 is just T2, 14.7, plus 14.7 again. Is that it? Do we miss out anything? Ah, we did. Look carefully. What did we miss out? Is there another force acting on the this pulley wheel that we didn't write in? Ah, if you see it, don't forget, the pulley also has a mass. So yeah, there are strings pulling it down, but there's also another weight pulling it down. Okay, I purposely save this for last so we can see like, oh, it's not quite complete. There's one more stuff. So here actually you should do minus W. Minus W. One more thing missing. So here should be minus MG for the weight of the pulley. And here should also be Minus, no more space already. Uh, weight of the pulley is 1 kg times 9.81. That's the full amount of forces acting on the pulley. Okay, see what's missing? Alright, we have T2, T3, weight also pulling down. So, wow, this T1 has to really be strong. Really got to hold up everything. So if you calculate to the end, you should get T1 of about 39.2, which is a lot more compared to T2 and T3. It's only 14.7, but T1 has to hold up so much stuff, the two blocks, including its own weight. That's why tension is much bigger. Okay, so there's, there's another shorter way to do it for T1, but this is the full proper way to think about each force. No shortcuts. Okay, so that's the whole section about tension. The last force you need to know about is called the upthrust force. You can write it as F up or in, uh, in A levels in the past questions, you will see them write U. You may have heard of the word buoyancy before. Okay, Buoyancy is related to the same idea. Now let's do a thought experiment. If you have a container of water, big container of water, then you take a ping pong ball and you push it down to the middle of this container. Once you let go, what's going to happen to the ping pong ball? Where is it going to move? Take a look at it. Think about it. Yep, if you thought about it, the ping pong ball will actually move up until it floats on the surface and just chills there. But why is that so? What causes it to move up? That's what we call the upthrust force. Okay. So whenever you have an object partially or fully submerged in a fluid, partially means if you only push it halfway like that, partially. No? Okay, as long as you have something inside a fluid, then there'll be an uptrust. Now take note, be careful, warning, warning. Fluid doesn't just mean water, okay? Fluid can mean air, also a fluid. Could mean water, piss, or it could mean uh, molten metal. So metal that is very hot already is just like a fluid, but molten lah, so it's glowing red hot, like lava. So all these we call fluids, as long as it's moving around. So this one will look more in uh, another unit in this topic, in this chapter. But for first, I want you to know what is Archimedes' principle. So Archimedes' principle, you can write this down in some space provided in your notes, okay? How do we find the uptrust? The uptrust equals to weight of fluid displaced. What does that mean? Let's say I'm under the sea. Oh, let's draw a little lower. Under the sea. Then I put a container inside. A uh, Milo can, for example. So I'm going to have a container inside that. Why I use dotted line is because I want to show you when you push that container down, it's going to displace some fluid. It means it's going to it will say, ah, fluid, you go to the side. 
this is my space now. So it displays some fluid. So fluid's not going to like that. It's going to exert an up thrust on this entire uh, container because uh, the fluid is displaced. So if this thing displays 20 newtons of fluid, then the up thrust will be 20 newtons, pushing it up. Another way we would think about it in A-levels, this is the one you want to uh, re memorize as you do your exams or answer questions, is that up thrust exists due to pressure difference. Oh, another idea of thinking about uh, up thrust. What does that mean? Let's draw more water. So under the sea, if we have a container pushed all the way to the middle of this water tank, it's going to experience some up traps. But what is this pressure, pressure thing? Think about this pressure as uh, there's a pressure in the fluid, okay? So here got pressure, which is pretty low. Then as you go deeper and deeper, the water pressure is quite high. So if you have ever gone swimming, you dive to the bottom of the pool, you feel like your ears are being pressed in, sometimes even painful. And that's because as you go lower, the water pressure is higher. So there's some high pressure down there and that's going to push up your container because down here high pressure ma, acting on this surface. Here is low pressure acting on this surface. So the pressure difference will cause this up thrust that pushes it up. Okay, so two ways to think of up thrust. Think about the one on the right more because that one's what you will think about in A levels here. Okay, so that's all the forces I have for you today. We will look more into up thrust forces in the next few units.